podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being. Being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Channeling is a lifelong skill that can be used in everyday life. Just imagine what life would be like if you needed to make a decision and you received specific information to help you. If you were not feeling well and you could receive a free healing instantly. If you connected to your soul and found out about your life's purpose. You connected to your deceased mom and talked with her again. All of this is possible for you, plus more, when you learn how to channel. Valeria Tellis interviews Diana Mianz Chen about her book, Know Your Soul, Bring Joy to Your Life. It describes the origin, purpose, and structure of the soul and provides instruction for connecting to your soul. The authors vividly describe personal experiences and interactions with their higher self and soul. Based on inspiration from their guides and the loving direction of Archangel Michael, rarely disclosed or understood information is revealed. Diana grew up in the suburbs of St. Louis. When she was 19, she decided to move to Boston, which proved to be a great city for her. She fell in love with jazz dance there, so much so that she ended up being a professional jazz dancer, dance teacher, and choreographer. When Diana was in her 30s, to further her professional dance career, she moved to New York City. However, the divine, as she says, had something else in mind for her. She sat in a spiritual medium circle with Clifford Bias, who was the granddaddy of a lot of New York City trance channels. In this circle, Diana started to meditate and to meet some of her spirit guides. She loved being with the spirits and decided to learn the skill of channeling. In 1986, she began to channel professionally and has had a private practice since that time. Diana has been channeling her higher self, Lady Diana, for over 30 years now. To the delight of many, Lady Diana loves to sit and chat over tea as she talks to them about their goodness and their challenges, plus answers their important questions. During the time Diana had a private practice, she taught classes and learn different techniques to assist people. To read Diana's full biography, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Here is the interview with Diana Mianz Chen. In your own words, who is Diana Mianz Chen? I'm a woman who's been through a lot of spiritual experiences I try my best to help people spiritually. I've done a lot of studying. I channel uh, Archangel Michael to help people. I lead groups and I have a family, (laughs) Um, a husband and a daughter. And I live in Westchester, New York, and I have an office in New York City. So I have a few warm-up questions for you before we talk about your book, Know Your Soul, Bring Joy to Your Life. Can you please help me with the co-author's name, David? His name is David Schwerin. Thank you. So my first question is, what is life? Wow, this is a big question. Well, you know, because I've been thinking so much about the soul in writing the book, but also Archangel Michael is really channeling information about it a lot. I think of life as the soul in human form, trying to learn lessons, trying to grow and change. 
And it takes on a physical form, a physical body, and different attributes in the physical body. And we are offered all kinds of opportunities to grow and change in life. Is there an opposite to life? Well, you know, when I think of life, I think of the human materialized form in the body, human being, in humanity. When there's no more of that, we return. Everything gets reabsorbed back to our soul. And then the soul decides if it's going to incarnate again, be in cycle of growth again. Oh, wow. I can't wait to ask you all the questions I have here about the soul's journey and the soul um, itself. Before that, I have two more questions. What comes to mind when you hear the word freedom? You know what comes to my mind? is being with the spirit realm, because I channel so much, I love being with the spirits. And it makes me feel very expanded. It makes me feel very free. I feel open-hearted. It's a wonderful feeling to channel, to connect to the spirit realm, and to be with Archangel Michael or my higher self or my soul. And, And that gives me a sense of freedom. Wow. What is love to you? That is a very important word, a very important concept, a very important state of being for me right now. A couple of years ago, I started to go through what's called reincarnation in the same body, which means I decided, my soul decided to keep the same body and to create a different purpose, to live by a different purpose in the same incarnation. Instead of my body dying, I kept the same body, and now my purpose is to choose love. And so I'm receiving all kinds of wonderful lessons around this. And especially, I mean, there's so much going on on the planet now with with the pandemic. And it's about really helping others and expressing my love. And what I'm coming to understand too, Valeria, is that I love to love. It makes me feel really good. I feel warm and fuzzy inside. I feel connected to other people. I smile. Other people smile. I'm able to give. And it's it's a beautiful purpose and I'm growing into it. Wow. It's not something that I have all kind of nailed down and perfect and I know how to do this exactly. I don't. I'm learning. It's my purpose for the second half of my life, I think. So let's talk about your book and you and your book. You were a professional jazz dancer, dance teacher, and choreographer before moving to New York, where you you decided to learn channeling. So that's basically, I have two questions. What is channeling? And is channeling a healing method? And can anyone channel? Yeah, great questions. So channeling, if I kind of distill it down to its purest form, channeling is where we go into a trance state, which is just simply we expand our energy field, get very quiet, we expand our energy field, and we open up up to connection to a different realm. And it's a skill. I know some people say it's a gift, but I really disagree. I've been teaching Mm -hmm. channeling since 1988. I've been, I've been teaching it a while. So what I'm saying is I see people can learn it. I learned it. So it is a skill, I believe. And when you open to a different realm of existence, different dimension, you can bring through healing energy. So yes, you can do healing with it. And you can bring through information. And information can be in all kinds of different forms. Some people paint. They channel paintings and drawings. Some people compose music. Some people write inspirational writing. They write down things and create books and pamphlets and so on. So it's a very wonderful skill to develop. Wow. And you said it's a skill. So anyone can actually practice and become a channeler. Yes. Wow. What does it take? What is the process? Meditation is one of them? Yes, you're right. So I always say meditation is the cornerstone of channeling. It helps you to get your mind calm, your energy feel clearer, you get more relaxed. 
And that really helps you to connect to spirit. Now, with meditation, it helps you also to get so calm and relaxed that you open up to have more psychic abilities because the interface between us and let's say the angelic realm or our soul or a connection to a deity, it's the, our psychic ability. We connect in that way. We hear with our mind's voice, clear audience. We feel sensations in our body, energy coming into us that we feel physical sensations from, clairvoyance, we see images in our mind. So that's how we interact you know, with the spirit world. Right. It makes sense to me. So before I begin asking you other questions about the soul, let me ask you the main question about the soul so I understand what that is. Uh, What is the difference between the higher self, the soul, God, uh, divine energy, the creator, intuition, the source, the spirit? There are so many names, right? Um, (laughs) I went on and on and on with my list. (laughs) You know, we can all get very confused about this. David and I chose terms that may not be mean the same thing in different modalities than what we have. So to us, in our book, when we talk about the soul, that's the part of us that is uh, the first individuation from creator, from God, from the divine, whatever you want to, from source, whatever you want to call that energy. So your soul, our soul, each of us is an individuation from the divine and it's very high in vibration. And I tell my channeling students, that's the place to go. If you want to learn about your purpose in this life, why did you incarnate? If you want to know about your next spiritual steps, your soul will answer questions that are very broad and have the overview. Now, In 2012, Archangel Michael started to teach the anatomy of the soul, and we do teach that in our soul classes. So the soul is broken down into different segments, and we teach that in our classes. And then you come into the higher self, and the higher self is like a bridge between the soul and our energy field, which is commonly called the aura. I call it the energy field. And so the higher self bridges the energetic between our soul and our energy field and our personality self, our our human self. So your higher self contains all information that uh, our soul has kind of gathered. It's a depository for that. So if you want to learn about uh, another incarnation your soul has had, if you want to ask mundane kind of questions, Uh, Should I take more vitamin C? Is this the right workshop to take? Um, And you can ask even harder questions than that. But those kind of questions you should direct to your higher self. Your higher self will answer that for you. When you transition, when your physical body starts to die, your energy field folds up. It goes up and out the top of your head. It does it systematically when you die slowly. All of that energy goes into your higher self, and then all of that goes up and gets reabsorbed into your soul. Oh, so the soul is the um, container of the higher self. Exactly. The soul kind of, when your soul decides to incarnate, it really sculpts and decides exactly what you're going to be in this incarnation, if you're going to be a man or woman, if you're going to choose a handicapped body or not, if you're going to be born in Ecuador or Canada, or Australia, or the U.S., you know, it decides and what your mother and father are going to be like, what souls are going to be a part of this incarnation for you. So there's some things that are decided beforehand, and that template is brought into the higher self and then into your energy field, and through what's called a line of purpose, which is a line that goes straight through the center of you, and it's a a direct connection to your soul. Why do we decide to come back? Do we have to or this is based on beliefs we just believe that we are separate from the source why do we reincarnate the main purpose from my understanding of what michael has taught me is that creator creation all that exists is about movement it wants to keep moving that's its nature and so souls are part of that movement 
they are created for movement purposes. And so we as human beings need to stay in that movement too, to try and clear blocks, to finish karma, to keep changing and growing and adding to creation. And so in that light, when we incarnate, it depends on what the soul, how much the soul can grow and change if it does a particular cycle. Now, Michael's also taught me that we can have incarnations, not necessarily in materialized form, like a human body. We can also have cycles of growth as spirit beings when we don't have a materialized body. And I found that actually kind of fascinating. So, you know, incarnation usually means in body. However, you know, it's a cycle of growth and incarnation. And so with that definition, we can also see that as a spirit being, we can also have a cycle of growth. Maybe we become a teacher in the spirit realm and live out that cycle and learn from that. And there's many different cycles we could choose in body and out of body. Did I answer your question? So in a way, it's endless. It it never stops. Um, We're always creating and moving. Well, again, Michael said that we could, you know, our soul at some point could get reabsorbed into creator, you know, and that would be the end of the individuation for our soul. But that's not a bad thing, you know. Um, We're always part of creation no matter what. Right. So speaking of Archangel Michael, who is he? Was he a human being before? Well, Archangel Michael is wonderful. He's helping. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that. He's my he's my my dear friend and a wonderful, wonderful spirit. And when I was writing my channeling book, I did some research with him about angels. I tried not to do too much Googling and looking up angels on the internet. And Michael, just so I wouldn't be tainted, you know, or or have this kind of preconceived idea already. So I talked to Michael and he said, you know, archangels, they're, it's really a job description. Archangels do this kind of more global, bigger job than maybe some other angels do. So he does not see it at, uh, from a place of ego, that he is sort of the top of the rung of, you know, angels. He says that whole thing about where angels are in terms of the hierarchy. He said, that's not really how it is. I mean, us as human beings, we, I guess we kind of need that, you know, who's lesser, who's more, you know, where's the you know, food chain, you know. So but with, with Michael, he's saying it's not like that. And what his purpose is, is to teach many people to heal, to help us on the earth right now. And he's very, how can I say this? He's around a lot. He's everywhere. He is with many, many people. I channel him, but I'm not the only one who channels him. There's many people that channel him. He's very active on the earth right now to help us because it's a big time of change. It's a big time of of transition for all of us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Talk to me, Diana, about this time of change. What kinds of change? For the last couple of years, maybe three years, or so, Michael's been talking to us about how it's all about clearing our energy field, clearing out karma, letting go of stuff. And there's been divine energy coming onto the planet, into us, to help us to clear stuff. So Michael has been very strong in directing us to let stuff go. He said some people are having the negativity come up inside of them and not realizing that they're letting it go to clear. They get involved in it and think that it's them. They identify with that negativity, thinking them, thinking that they're bad in some way, you know, and All then right. they act out on that. So Michael cautioned us. He said, really, this energy is bringing up our negativity so we can let it go. He said, whenever that negativity comes up, don't try to figure out what it's about, what's going on let it go, really release it out and don't, don't own it anymore. Don't try and bring it back. Don't try to figure it out. You know, what is this about? What does it connect to? Just let it go. And the energy is increasing on the planet. And that's a good thing. People are really becoming more conscious. 
Yes, oh yes. Within myself, I study myself, <laughs> what it's trying to do here, and it has been changing. I try to just be aware of what's happening without attachment. It's a hard thing to do. And speaking of that, letting, letting go, less attachment, uh, what are some of the methods that you um, suggest would go back to meditation? Oh, you mean to clear your energy field? Yes, yes. Well, uh, again, an excellent question. If you want to clear your energy field, if you want to stay clear, I would suggest that you ask, if you pray to a particular you know, deity or a saint, or if you're connected to a particular spirit being, that you ask them to clear your energy field multiple times a day because we pick up things that people are letting go of. We are trying to release our negativity. So it's really time to ask for help. And the spirits don't mind helping us as often as we need, whenever we need. So ask for that help. Pray, ask for God to take the energy, to clear your energy. I also suggest to people I work with to take a bath or a shower at night before you go to bed and to have the intention of clearing whatever you picked up during that day, to let it go, just let it go. Also, when you start to feel afraid or you start to feel angry or something of that sort, that you really focus on letting that go. When it comes up emotionally, when you start to think negatively, say, I'm just letting this go now to God. I'm letting this go to Archangel Michael, what, uh, Virgin Mary, whatever, whatever energy that you connect to. This is the work that you also do, Diana, clearing energy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of that. And I help my students to understand how to keep their energy clear. You know, when we, I teach channeling, when we teach channeling, because Michael, the Archangel, teaches our channel classes with us and teaches the soul classes with me. Um, we teach people uh, techniques on how to clear their private space around them and how to hold that strong and how to be grounded and not space cadets in life. Because, you know, as spiritual people, it's easy to be a little bit spacier because, you know, we're meditating, we're reading spiritual books, we're journaling, we're praying, we're doing things that make us more expanded. And so grounding becomes incredibly important for us to stay in the present moment, to be aware of what's going around us, around us, and also to feel our physical body. I like that. And I believe in everything you say as a practice. Uh, talk to me about universal purpose and individual purpose, the difference between them. Yeah, so again, this is Michael teaching that in our soul book. So there are two purposes that our souls have. Each soul has two purposes. Typically, people talk about the individual purpose a lot. You know, why am I here? Like a few minutes ago, I talked about my new purpose in life, which is to choose love, to come from a loving place as much as I possibly can. So that's an individual purpose. Another, another person might have a purpose of, you know, healing their self in a particular way. Maybe they have a wound of abandonment. So healing that and then coming from their heart to make a connection to others. And there's just so many purposes people can have that are individual. Now, when we get to the universal purpose, that's more the global purpose that each soul has. And that's going back again to what I said earlier. That's about what our soul wants to do for creator, which is to keep movement happening. We encounter block. We feel like we can't create intimacy with our spouse. We get into that block. We try and clear it. We try to understand it. We try to move it, you know, move beyond that so that we can love our spouse and connect our spouse, our spouse in a meaningful way. So that's the movement that I'm talking about. Healing, clearing blocks and things like that. So according to Archangel Michael, there are three segments to the soul. What are they and what are their purposes? Okay, so we get more involved in this in our soul classes, but I will say that the soul through the segments is involved in creating the physical body in the womb and it sculpts the energy. It sculpts the energy field. It brings in everything that the human being needs for the incarnation. I went to Barbara Brennan School of Healing and I learned that there's an etheric web that's created around the fetus 
to protect the baby from outside influences, to help it to grow in an environment that's very nurturing and caring. So the soul really gets in there and creates, you know, between the sperm and the egg, the zygote, that beginning spark, it starts to create that from the sections of the soul. And it's a beautiful, beautiful way of doing it. And at the very edge of our soul is the part where we start to blend into creator. And sometimes will people will expand so far that they'll get to that outer edge part of the soul and it will take them right into creator and feeling really part of all that exists and not separate from anything. And it's really actually quite a beautiful state of being. I like what you said, state of being and not an experience. A lot of people have talked about as an experience. I love the way you said, a state of being. Thank you. Why are so many of us afraid of death, losing the physical body? I've been thinking about this a lot, Melaria. So we're on the same wavelength here. You know, because I've been through, actually, my father uh, passed this past December. And I had the, the blessing to be with him a lot and to watch clairvoyantly the process of his passing. And that's part of what I put into my teaching. But what I think, oh, wait, I lost your question. Repeat your question again. Oh, about, um, yes. about the death, why people are afraid. Yeah, um, I think because death involves the element of surrender, of letting go. It's really a process of letting go of this incarnation. And if we have practiced surrender in our life before that time, it becomes easier. If we've had contact with the spirit realm before we pass, it becomes easier because we just go to friends we know. As people pass, they spend more and more time out of their body. They see dead relatives, they see uh, spirit guides they know. And um, it helps, I think, them because the spirits are like the midwives. So when our soul comes out of the physical form, the spirits are there to kind of be there as midwives. So we actually have midwives at both ends of our incarnation. We had midwives when uh, we are coming out of the womb, right? We have the doctor or midwife to help us to be born. And then we have midwives in spirit when we leave the body. But to answer your question, really, I think it's a lot about surrender. It's about letting go and, you know, letting go of, you know, the people in our lives and the possessions and the lifestyle and all of that stuff. So in a way, it's possible to die before we die. Yes, it's possible to practice that. A very interesting practice, isn't it? It is, yeah. So speaking of surrender, uh, resistance, how surrender, resistance, fear, the ego, free will and choice can assist or block the flow of life? Our soul is very joyful coming into incarnation. There's a joy. And when we come into incarnation, we can start to encounter the blocks, the resistance and our personality self. Our soul wants to get some things done. It has some things, some tasks it wants us to do. But our personality self can thwart that and stop it because of fear, because it doesn't want to surrender, because we uh, want to do something else that's more pleasurable, or whatever the case may be. So to practice connecting to our soul and surrendering to our soul's energy coming through us in a very conscious way. That helps us to not get in the way so much, to not have so much resistance, to not have so much blocking. Right. It makes sense. We talked about letting go, uh, surrender. And also, I read a lot in your book, the word uh, acceptance. What is the difference between let go, surrender and acceptance? Well, I think you have to have some kind of acceptance to surrender. You have to accept that the situation is what it is. You know, my friend has always said to me, it is what it is. You know, that's sort of acceptance. It Okay, so this is how it's going to be. And then moving into that state of surrender. Okay, so this is what it's going to be. So I'm going to open up to whatever it is. I open up to what's going to happen. 
would you say that inner peace is uh, the state, a state of mind after we surrender? I think we could say that, yeah. So on Soul Lessons, you tell the story when you broke your left wrist and injured your head during a game called Pickleball. So what Soul Lessons did you learn from that experience? Okay, now that was my co-author, David. Not me, but you know, probably you're thinking it was me because I channeled for David regularly. For many years, I've channeled for him, you know, given him higher self messages from his higher self. And he talked about these circumstances, you know, as it was happening, he talked to his higher self and my higher self about it. So, you know, there was my kind of participation in this. And I think that he really had to learn how to let go and realize that these kinds of things that were happening to him physically brought lessons to be learned. They weren't just sort of bad events that happened to him and he had bad luck or whatever, but they were things that he had to learn from. You know, he had to learn how to let go. He had to learn to, you know, uh, that his physical body was finite. You know, he had to give up some ideas and some uh, notions and really just Accept and surrender. Yeah. So now thinking that's him, David, he said uh, that he one of the lessons was to learn to receive because he was all he was giving more into giving. So the left hand, that's what it symbolized receiving. How interesting. You mentioned earlier, this is a very interesting subject, reincarnation in the same body. When does when do we know it's the time or how can we take part of that process or start that process of reincarnation in the same body? It usually happens without our conscious awareness from what I've seen. You know, it happened to me, it happened to David, my co-author, and it happened to a teacher uh, at Barbara Brennan School of Healing that I was going to in the 1990s. It happened to her. With all three of us, it happened in a different way. So there's no kind of set thing that happens. It is a process. And how you would know about it would be that you probably feel like you're really in transition. Things don't feel normal inside of yourself. And uh, it just puts you in kind of a state of um, disease, not disease, but un- feeling uneasy sometimes feeling really expanded sometimes, um, feeling different. That's all I can say. Now, how David found out was through his higher self. How I found out was I just got vertigo for three days and I couldn't move. And there were all these incredible chills moving through me and light moving through me. And finally, when it subsided, I had, I could... have the frame of mind where I could talk to Michael. And I said, what is going on? And, you know, I started to learn about this. Uh, That's really interesting that this is possible. I never heard about reincarnation in the same body before. That's the first time. So I guess some of my last questions are about some of the ways we can connect with our souls on a daily basis. First, the meditation, which you brought up earlier, which is a great idea. Meditating to calm your mind, to calm your energy field, to relax your body. And that gives you a calmness so you can go deep inside yourself. What exists deep inside yourself is what Michael calls the line of purpose or the soul line. It is like a channel of energy. It's like a canal of energy. And it's a line that goes straight through you. And just with your intention, because your intention directs energy, you intend to go deep inside of yourself to access the line of purpose. And when you do that, you'll start to touch in on it. You'll feel a more expanded uh, state. You'll feel, um, how else do you feel? It's big, it's expanded. You start to feel, most people feel wonderful connecting to their soul. And so if you go into that soul line, it helps you to connect directly to your soul. So that's what I would suggest. Yeah, that sounds good. Do we ask questions? Is that one of the ways to, I know you mentioned earlier, questions. um, Is that another way of meditating and then asking questions? 
yes, you can go into your soul and then ask questions using your mind's voice, ask questions. And you can either write them down or you can speak them out loud and record them. You know, it, that's what we call channeling the soul. And um, Michael and I do teach classes on how to do that. How do we know for sure, Diana, that we are listening to the right voice that's directing us to the right path, uh, per se? It's getting accustomed for you individually how you experience your soul when you're in your soul's vibration. And that takes practice. Going deep inside, your soul is not like, it's not like an ordinary energy, it's extraordinary. So you need to feel big, you need to feel uh, very expanded, you need to feel joy. Um, Those are the types of things sometimes people tear up, they feel very moved when they're in the soul. So it's not an ordinary daily experience unless you practice conscious connection to your soul. Then it becomes more uh, ordinary, more a part of your day. And that's what I think we all should head towards is being consciously con- uh, connected to our soul during our day, not just in meditation, but when we move about our day so we can let our soul help to guide us so we stay on our path. Mm, I like that. And speaking of meditation, I know I hear the word uh, mindfulness a lot. Is that the same thing, mindfulness meditation? Is that the same thing or they are different somehow? Now, from what I know, now I haven't studied mindfulness, but from what people tell me, it's really a kind of meditation where you're very much in the moment and you're watching your thoughts, you're watching your physical body, you're very present and just being present with yourself in that state of just being. And with the connection to your soul, with the meditation, it, it, meditation can be many different kinds of things that you do. And the meditation I just suggested going into your soul line, that is different from mindfulness. That's having the intention to just contact your soul. Oh, the intention. It's, it's more expanded. Yeah, it's not as grounded of a meditation as mindfulness from what I know. No, that makes sense to me, right? It's not as grounded. Yeah, that makes so much sense, right? Um, yeah, I have some final questions to ask you. But before that, would you like to add anything that my previous questions didn't cover? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, you did a really good job of asking just the right questions. I think that we pretty much handled everything on my list. Oh, wow. Great. So my final questions how do you define success? What is to be successful? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. when you say success, people, I think, immediately think of their job, you know, being successful in their job or having a lot of money. But, you know, I think there's another element here. I think success needs to also have the element of joy, of feeling happy with one's life. And again, that part of being connected to your soul really engenders having joy in life because your soul came in with joy. No matter what you're experiencing now, your root of this incarnation is being joyful. Your soul was very joyful in coming into the incarnation you have now. And so success is, I think, broader than just being successful in a job or having a lot of money. What was the hardest lesson to learn about yourself and life? Ah, let me just breathe and ask myself. (laughs) This is a big question. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to share something a little vulnerable here. My soul chose a, uh, a, what we call a cycle of violence. So my soul wanted to learn from choosing to be uh, bad in some incarnations. And to work my way through that cycle of incarnations to start to be someone who does no longer want that drama of that negativity. I made a very conscious decision to let go of people that um, were abusing me because 
I didn't want to prolong that cycle that I was in. I abuse you, you abuse me, we keep going back and forth, and it just, it was enough already. And so I had to, I had to really work hard on that one, Valeria. I mean, seriously work hard on that one. It was not easy for me, but I really came to that spot of, you know, this does not work anymore. I'm done with this karma. I learned a lot as a soul from this. And that souls do choose this. This is not a weird thing to choose. You know, it's something that um, a lot of us choose because it's a strong way of learning. It's a strong way of growing. It's a strong way of figuring a lot of things out and becoming stronger. So I'm not You know, I'm among many people who have chosen this. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I can relate to it, unfortunately, we say. Do you believe in unconditional self-love? Yes, I definitely believe in that. And what augments that is unconditional love from my spirit guides, from my higher self and soul. So in my personality self, yes. And it's not... It's not something that I came to immediately. Again, I, I am, I've been working on myself since um, about 35 years, like ongoing all the time. <laughs> and, wow. you know, I've come to a place after so much of really liking myself and of deeper loving myself no matter what. That's wonderful. If you knew you would die soon, meaning losing the body, Would you make any change in your life or do anything differently? No, you know, the cycle of violence I talked about, I feel so good about that. I feel like that's one of the few things that I really had to work through in this lifetime. I feel wonderful about the work I do. I love my work. I love to help people. I love to channel. I love being with the spirit, (laughs) you know, and I feel like I've done well in my family. So there's just a lot I feel good about. Sure, there's some things I don't feel great about, but there's these main themes. And then the choosing love again and really learning that well now and helping the planet with that because we're in a time now where the negativity is really strong and we need to bring the love out. We need to do that. And I think spiritual people are being called to do that. You know, we got to put ourselves out there now. But um, I think that if I were to pass, uh, you know, tonight or today, um, I would feel those things and I would know that those midwives were waiting for me on the spirit side. (laughs) (laughs) How great. My last question, what are three things about life you know for sure as of this moment? You know, life is finite. I do know that. (laughs) You know, life is finite. I know for sure that I really like being in my body. And that took years for me to grow into because I, as a spiritual person, I see this with a lot of people. We like to be spacey. We like to touch the outer realms. We like to that kind of energy boost. And I used to feel safer being out of my body and in that kind of altered state. But now I feel much better being in my body. It feels good. It feels safe. And uh, that feels really good. And so I know that for sure. And what else do I know? God, you know, I think back to when I was going to the healing school and I know I was meditating a lot during that time and my clairvoyance opened up and I started to see solid objects as moving molecules. And so I know for sure from personal experience that the solid stuff, like the chair I'm sitting on right now, is actually in movement. And so that was a big aha for me. I don't know why I just thought of that, but I just thought of that. Yeah. (laughs) It goes back about the, what you talked about, about, life is a movement. Yeah, so everything's moving constantly, right? Everything is moving. How wonderful. Thank you so much, Diana. It has been a um, deep, fun, and genuine conversation. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Where can we find more information about you, your work, products, services, and future projects? All right, listeners. So I'm going to 
spell out my website because my middle name is a little different. So you can go to my website. It's www. And that's then it's Diana, D-I-A-N-A. And then it's M-U-E-N-Z-C-H-E-N dot com. Other than that, on Amazon, I have two books, Channeling the Heart and the Art. And then the soul book we've been talking a lot about, Know Your Soul, Bring Joy to Your Life. So you could go on Amazon, you could get um, you know, the paperback, the soul book, and Kindle also. And, and as a special deal for your listeners, Valeria, I'm offering them a free soul meditation that I channeled a while ago with Archangel Michael. It's about 10 minutes. It helps you to go into a meditative state to access your soul's purpose. It's really a beautiful meditation. If you email me, you can, uh, I'll, I'll send you that uh, meditation. Okay, and my email is, uh, you can contact me on my website, you know, through contact us, you know, that link that you find on websites, or you can email me at diana at diana, dot com. Now, one other thing I want to say, I have a soul class coming up where you get to learn how to channel your higher self and soul, how to ask questions and inspirationally write through your higher self and soul. And that's going to be April 20th, Monday, April 20th from 8 to 1030 Eastern Time. So you might want to also register for that. You can email me to register for that. Thank you so much again. And we'll talk soon. Yes. Thank you, Valeria, for taking your time to bring your listeners all this information. Thank you for what you do, Diana. We'll talk soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Diana Mien's Chen, please visit her website, dianamienschen.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. I want to thank the Patreon members, Lawrence McGrath, Mark Basden, Terry Clayton, and Aidan Bigrock. Thank you again for listening, and bye for now.